Today we're diving into the world of clipless pedals. Well, these cool little devices will make you faster if you have an efficient pedal stroke to go with them. Now, how does that happen? You will feel more comfortable on the bike. You'll feel more attached to the bike. You'll be able to handle the bike better. You will transfer power from your legs into the pedals more efficiently, thus giving you a faster race finish time guaranteed. Sounds like the magic pill, right? Mm, no. Something with clipless pedals you need to know, they can be dangerous. What I mean by that is they cause crashes. What will happen is you, if you don't get clipped out on time, you can tip over. If you don't start off right, you can flip over. They can cause injury. They can cause knee, ankle, and foot injuries. And if you stay right here, I'm gonna bring you some really great information on these little beauties, the clipless pedals and how to ride them safely. As we delve into the discussion on clipless pedals, we're gonna see that there are three basic different types of pedals. The first is a speed play pedal, and that is a small disc where the pedal itself is just a clip part and the mechanism is up inside the shoe. I'm not a big fan of these, though they work absolutely great. I don't like the idea of the mechanism being in the bottom of the shoe where rocks or dirt can get inside of and follow them up as you go through transition in your race. Now for road biking, wonderful. Triathlon, not a fan. The second type is the SBD. These will be found more on mountain biking and on the spin bikes in the gym. The advantages of these, they can clip in on both sides. They're very easy to work with. And with the mountain bike style shoes, you have the, the bottoms where you can actually walk on them with absolutely no problem. The disadvantages, they only mount in the center of the shoe through. It can cause foot pain because it really has a small area where you're pushing your power through the pedal. The third type that I like to use is from the company called Look. These are a very, very good pedal because Number one, because the mechanism is built into the pedal, not into the shoe. This allows you to go through transition without having any issues of dirt or rocks getting stuck up in the mechanism and causing the cleat not to connect to the bike. There are several different companies that make power meters that go with a look style clip in system. When you talk about setting up these pedals, this is where you can have an issue if they're set up incorrect. You can hurt your knees, your ankle, or your feet by having these set up at the wrong angles or in the wrong point on the shoe. There are three different types of cleats that you can attach to the bottom of your shoe in this style of system. There's the black, and the black is a zero flow, which means when your foot is clipped in, you have no movement whatsoever in the cleat. This can cause pain and injury if they're not set up correct. To give a little bit on that, you have the gray. These are four and a half degree float, which gives you a little bit of play, a little bit of lead way for your knees, ankles, and feet in the setup of your cleats. And then there's the red. The red is a nine degree float. Nine degree float is quite a bit of float, quite a bit of movement before you have any tightness in the cleat or to be able to clip out of the cleat. What that does is it gives you a very wide margin of error in the setup of your cleat, but you won't feel quite as connected to the bike as you will with the gray, and you won't feel quite as connected to the bike as you would with the black. Pro riders, experienced riders, beginners. If you're getting value from this video, drop down below and give me a thumbs up. If you think this is a channel that is gonna bring you value over time, hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. Leave a comment and tell me if you have ever had problems with your clipless pedals. Wives Tale is everyone tips over once or twice when they start riding clipless pedals. That can be avoided. And how you can avoid that is first to learn how to clip in and clip out. We're gonna to touch on that just a little bit, showing you how you roll your toe onto the front of the pedal and push down in the back to clip in. And then you twist your foot sideways to the outside to clip out. Super easy, tons of videos out there on that subject and YouTube. 
So we're just gonna go right there, show you that little bit, and then move on to doing it safely. The safest place and my favorite place to have any of my athletes who are changing over to clipless pedals do this is on a trainer. A smart trainer doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be anything but a trainer to, that keeps your bike stable and allows you to get on and practice clipping in and clipping out of the pedals. Now, where do you get one of these trainers? You can find one pretty cheap. I'll put a link in the description below for a very inexpensive uh, manual trainer, or you can borrow one. See if you can find somebody who has one that'll let you borrow them for a couple of hours and practice going, clipping in and clipping out on the trainer. If you don't have an indoor trainer, the next best place to try your clipless pedals is leaning up against a door or a wall. You clip in, clip out several times to get practice doing that. But I must say, when you're practicing your clipless pedals, wear your gloves, wear your helmet, because you can crash just sitting still trying this. You don't want to cut up the inside of your hands. It makes work horrible in the next few days. Next, we want to talk about starting and stopping. This is an area that does not get much coverage on the internet. Starting off with clipless pedals is a very important exercise because this is the area where you can fall over and cause an incident, especially crossing traffic. You do not want to fall down in front of oncoming moving cars. You want to be able to get going really quick. So practice this. What we're going to do is we're going to step on the bike by putting our leg over the bar, not over the seat, over the bar, getting balanced. We're going to clip in one pedal. taking that pedal and bringing it up to about the 11 o'clock position. Then you're going to push forward half a turn very strong to get up some speed so that you can roll forward, get your balance and clip in. Practice both your starts and your stops over and over and over again until you get it down cold before you head out on the road. So as you're coming up to a stop, Unclip early, stand up, move your body weight forward of the seat, slowing down, using your body as a pendulum slightly off center to the side that you are unclipped on. Come to a complete stop, nice and safe. Now that you see how to do this, you need to practice this until it becomes second nature before you take off on a long bike ride. So take and find an area where you can take a loop around a small neighborhood we have a half mile loop in our neighborhood with two stop signs no traffic great place to do that or you can find a place like a park that has areas where you can practice stopping and starting no traffic is the key let's talk about efficiency and pedaling this is how you make these pedals after you learn how to use them become more efficient and have much more power you're going to do that by taking a look at this video right here where I give instructions on how the pedaling of your bike works. This is Coach John, who I'm out.